The Nvidia Shield TV Pro is the go-to streaming device for many home theaters, but is it the right choice for you? Or is there another streaming device that might fit your needs better? So I've actually had the Nvidia Shield TV Pro since about April of this year, 2021. So about eight months now. And while this isn't going to be a full review video or even a direct comparison to the Apple 4K TV, I will be talking about my experience with this guy here, going over what I think it does really well and where it starts to fall short and why I might actually recommend something else like the Apple 4K TV, depending on your situation. If you do own the Nvidia Shield TV Pro or the Apple 4K TV and you love it, you hate it, you're kind of in the middle, leave a comment as well and let other people know. I'd love to hear about it too. I'm sure other people doing research on if they should buy one over the other and why would really love to read about it as well. So help them out by posting a comment and let people know what you think. So why did I buy the Nvidia Shield TV Pro? What was my personal reasoning behind it? Well, basically, it was the Plex server functionality. I wanted a quick way to access my 4K UHD Blu-ray rips that I personally rip myself from movies that I own, as well as quick access to demo scenes so I can take chapters from those movies and have them in their own section. Now, having something like this when reviewing speakers and AV gear would be very convenient because I have a certain set of movies scenes and demos that I've heard time and time again, and I know what they sound like, or I know what they should sound like, I should say. And having those ready to go at any time basically allows me to kind of get through the process quicker and makes it much easier. I did also want to test out Nvidia's game stream because I was curious to see if it's something that I would end up using a lot or if the quality loss and added latency would be just too much, which I will talk about both of those aspects in a moment but that was more or less a feature I just wanted to check out and was curious about and not really a big reason why I got the Nvidia Shield. So I'll talk about the things I think the Nvidia Shield TV Pro does really well first before moving on to the things that I feel it falls short on. And I'll open it up with the Plex server functionality. And you know what, if you're thinking of getting this for Plex at all, just do it. Like it is 100% absolutely worth it. I've been really, really impressed using it as a way of playing my personal 4K UHD rips from my own library, along with the demo material I mentioned earlier. Now, I'm even able to pretty consistently get Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos at the same time out of the Nvidia Shield using Plex. I won't go too far or break down how I make backups of my discs because of legal reasons, but basically I'm now able to maintain the Dolby Vision metadata when I'm ripping that disc. And since I'm doing what's called a remux, there's absolutely no degraded picture or audio quality loss because there's no extra compression being done. I can also have chapter markers, subtitles, titles, multiple audio tracks, including things like commentary. So basically it's the same as what's on the disc, just minus the menus and extra features. Another big thing that I really like about this, and I didn't think I would, is the AI upscaling feature. And basically this is Nvidia's magic where they can take a lower resolution source and use AI upscaling to make it look a bit better. Now, I don't buy into the marketing BS and I'm not gonna say it looks like it's 4K because it just doesn't look like that, but it does look pretty good depending on if you give it a good source. So if you're feeding it a really low bitrate signal from say a stream on Netflix, it's not going to look as good as if you're using Plex and had a really high quality 1080p Blu-ray rip of that same movie. That would look far better than what you'd get from Netflix, which can still look good, but it's really just comes down to the quality of the source. But overall, when this setting is set to medium, it works really well. Something else that I really do like is having the ability to use a Bluetooth mouse, keyboard, or controller even all at the same time if you want to. You can actually plug in a Logitech USB dongle to one of the USB ports if you wanna go that route as well. It makes it so you can easily navigate through the menus or play with mouse and keyboard keyboard or a controller when using Nvidia's game stream. As for Nvidia's game stream, it actually does work pretty well once you get it set up, which is honestly <laughs> kind of a pain, and you obviously need an Nvidia graphics card to use it. The quality you get is pretty decent when everything is hardwired, though there are some slight compression artifacts you'll notice from time to time, especially on fast moving scenes or sections, and it's just the nature of the beast when you're compressing video. But overall, it's honestly pretty good. There is some input latency though, and it is something that I unfortunately just could not get used to at all. 
If you're highly sensitive to that stuff like I am, then you may have a hard time. So those are the things that I liked about it. And in terms of my expectations and did it meet them? Well, yes, it did. It performed extremely well and it actually went above my expectations when using Plex. But there are some things that it doesn't do particularly well and some issues that I've faced that I'll go over now. Now, in terms of Plex, there have been a couple of minor hiccups I've experienced, one of those being some slight stuttering when starting certain movies. Now, there have been instances where I would have to completely back out of a movie and restart it, and then it would just play fine. Now, I haven't checked with any of my other hard drives that I have to see if it may be something to do with the mechanical hard drive that I'm using, but honestly, it's not that big of a deal, and to spend all that time troubleshooting it, probably wouldn't be worth it. I do have some audio issues with select formats, mainly DTS high resolution or DTS HR, and I only have one disc that has that on it. It's my German import of the 4K UHD disc, The NeverEnding Story. Now, when I try to play it back using Plex, it's just dead silent. It will show up as DTS on my receiver, but for some reason, it's not getting flagged as DTS HR. What's funny though, is if I open that same video file in Kodi, I'm able to play that back with no problem and the receiver recognizes DTS HR without an issue. Same as if I play it through another device and let Plex re-encode it into just plain DTS. Again, not that big of a deal and how many discs have you seen use DTS HR? Now, another thing I do have occasional issues with is YouTube buffering for no reason at all. And it only happens on the Nvidia Shield. No other device on my network does this and I normally will watch it on my Apple 4K TV or through my PS5, and it never happens on either of those devices. The Nvidia Shield is hardwired, plugged directly into my router, and again, I don't have any other issues with other devices in my home, just the Nvidia Shield. Now, it might be a fluke or I potentially got a dud of a unit, but I really don't know. Now, like I said earlier, the game stream setup process is really a pain and is kind of convoluted to the point where I don't think I'd buy it just for game stream alone. The headaches I had to go through to get it set up were just not worth it for the end result you get, in my opinion at least. Now, I'm not saying that the quality is bad. It's actually really, really good for what it is. But the added latency that is introduced and that I just could not really adapt to just kind of made it all seem like a big waste of time trying to get it all to work. And to get the best quality out of game stream though, you need to find the settings menus, which are pretty much hidden way at the bottom of the screen when you're selecting a game to play. That's where you go to select 4K output, HDR, etc. Otherwise, you're gonna get 1080p by default. But now we come to my biggest issue with the Nvidia Shield, and that is the lack of an auto frame rate switching option. So what is that? mean? Basically, what that does is automatically switch to the frame rate of the content you're playing. So, for instance, if my main output is set to 4K 60 hertz on the Nvidia Shield and I want to go play a Netflix movie that is in 24 hertz or 24 frames per second, the Nvidia Shield will not automatically switch to that and will play the content back at 60 hertz which will add judder to a moving image by doing what's called 3-2 pull down to adapt 24 hertz to 60 hertz. Now this is kind of a big deal because it affects the motion and smoothness of the content on your screen. So typically sending your display 24 frames per second will result in motion that does not have the judder that it would typically have if something like the Nvidia Shield is converting it to 60 hertz. And it won't have the soap opera effect look to it if that's what you're thinking either. The motion would look more or less like it would if you went to the theater to see the movie. Now the lack of frame rate switching applies to every streaming app except for Plex and Kodi, which there's an option thankfully to turn on auto refresh rate switching within those apps. So if all you're gonna use the Nvidia Shield for is Plex or Kodi, then you're good to go. But for streaming apps like Netflix, Disney Plus, et cetera, there's no real option. Now there is a beta on the Nvidia Shield that's called Match Frame Rate, and it really only works with Netflix from what I've found. And even then, it's spotty at best. I'll go to enable it, the screen will go black for a second, it will come back up, and if I look at the info on my TV, well, it's still receiving 60 hertz. I'll have to do that process again, and then it will match the frame rate of the content. With other apps, it will either just crash the app or just cause weird issues. And so for me, this is kind of a deal breaker in terms of the streaming apps, not Plex though. Like I said, Plex is fantastic. I play everything through Plex on the Nvidia Shield and it just auto switches to whatever the frame rate of the content that I'm playing is. And that's exactly what I want. I don't want the Shield doing any type of extra 
motion processing, but there just isn't an option to have it do this automatically for most of the streaming apps. Something like the Apple 4K TV does have an option in the settings menu to automatically switch to the frame rate of the content you're playing, which means you never really have to worry about it again. So with that said, would I recommend the Nvidia Shield TV Pro? Yes and no. Now, if you're using this for Plex, like I said, it's fantastic, it's excellent for Plex. Set up a Plex server, you can access your Plex library on other devices, it's perfect for that. It works pretty much flawlessly with limited to no issues. Now, if you could not care less about automatically switching frame rates and streaming apps, then it's great for those. It's great for Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, Netflix, all that stuff. Now, if you do care about auto frame rate switching and want all your content played back in its native frame rate, then I personally wouldn't recommend this unless you're okay with going in and manually changing the frame rate every single time. And that actually creates another issue I didn't really talk about, where you need to know the frame rate your content is supposed to be in and then change it to that. And then if that's not available on the Shield menu, then you've got a whole other issue there. Now, if I'm just being honest, if you really care about auto frame rate switching in your streaming apps and you're not really interested in Plex, the Apple 4K TV will probably be a much better fit for you. For me personally, I use a Shield for Plex and sometimes YouTube, and I use my Apple 4K TV for all the other streaming apps and platforms. It just works better in my case for that. Now, I wouldn't really recommend this for game stream alone. Like I said, it's just too much of a hassle to get it working, and the quality and input lag also takes away from the overall experience. So if you have the option, you're much better off just plugging your PC up to your receiver via HDMI. You'll get much better quality and you won't be adding any extra latency on top of that. But as kind of like an extra bonus, if you view it like that, it's a pretty cool feature to have. And if you want a full review or any guides on how to set up a Plex server or the convoluted game stream setup or anything else, leave a comment down below and let me know. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and you got any value out of it at all, please consider hitting that like button and also subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.